In the previous videos, we have seen that the alpha position can be deprotonated and rendered nucleophilic upon treatment with base. If the enolate thus formed is then treated with an alkyl halide, or a comparable electrophile, the alpha position will be alkylated. This transformation can also be achieved via the intermediacy of an enamine. When treated with base, the alpha carbon can be deprotonated to afford a corresponding enolate. This enolate can then attack an unhindered alkyl halide to install a new substituent at the alpha position. Notice that this is merely an SN2 reaction of an alkyl halide in which an enolate is acting as the nucleophile that displaces the good leaving group. Recall that alkyl halides must be unhindered to participate in SN2 reactions. A mild alternative to the method that we have just seen entails the use of an enamine to achieve alpha alkylation. In the first step of this process, the enamine is formed by condensation of a ketone or aldehyde with a secondary amine. The full mechanism for this process can be reviewed in the video on enamine formation and hydrolysis. The enamine is also nucleophilic at the alpha carbon, so when treated with an alkyl halide, it too can attack and displace the leaving group. This results in an aluminium ion bearing a new substituent on the alpha position. The aminium ion is then hydrolyzed during the final step of the reaction when aqueous acid is added. The hydrolysis unveils the alpha alkylated ketone or aldehyde and releases the secondary amine in its protonated form. Again, the full mechanism for this process can be reviewed in the video on enamine formation and hydrolysis. In the following specific example, propiophenone is alkylated in the alpha position using methyl chloride. In the first step of this reaction, it is common to treat the substrate with a strong, non-nucleophilic base to completely deprotonate the alpha carbon. During the aldol and Claisen condensations, fairly weak bases were used because both the enolate and the unmodified substrate were needed in order for the reaction to move forward. In alpha alkylation, however, it is desirable to convert all of the substrate to its enolate. Strong non-nucleophilic bases used for this purpose include reagents such as lithium diisopropyl amide and sodium hydride. In this specific example, LDA or lithium diisopropyl amide is used. LDA forms the enolate and the equilibrium significantly favors the products. This can be rationalized by examining the pKa values of the ketone, which is about 20, and diisopropyl amine, which is about 35. This shows that the products are favored by approximately 10 to the 15th. The enolate is then treated with methyl chloride and attack of the enolate on the unhindered electrophilic carbon displaces chloride and yields the alpha alkylated product. In this next example, 
and enamine is employed to achieve the alpha alkylation of cyclohexanone. In the first step of the sequence, dimethylamine condenses with cyclohexanone to afford the enamine. If you'd like to see the full mechanism for this process, refer to the video on enamine formation and hydrolysis. The enamine then attacks ethyl bromide, which has an unhindered electrophilic carbon. Bromide is displaced in the process, and a new bond to the ethyl group is installed. Finally, in the last step of the sequence, the aminium ion is hydrolyzed when aqueous acid is added. The full mechanism for this process is available in the video on enamine formation and hydrolysis. The final product is the alpha-substituted ketone. In the preceding examples, there was no question of where alkylation would occur. There was either just one alpha carbon with protons, or the molecule was symmetrical. However, some substrates may have two different alpha carbons whose alkylation would lead to different products. When that is the case, regiochemistry becomes a concern. Such is the case with 2-methyl cyclohexanone. The choice of base and temperature allows for selective alkylation at a single location. When LDA is used at low temperatures, the alkylation will follow on the less hindered alpha carbon. However, when sodium hydride is used at higher temperatures, alkylation will follow at the more hindered alpha carbon. LDA is a hindered base due to its bulky isopropyl groups. So when LDA is used at low temperature, the more accessible alpha proton is removed. This forms what is known as the kinetic enolate. The removal of this proton proceeds through a transition state with minimal steric hindrance. Deprotonation at the other alpha center would have a higher energy transition state due to its greater steric encumbrance. The enolate formed under these conditions is termed the kinetic enolate since it is formed more readily. The kinetic enolate then attacks the unhindered electrophilic carbon of ethyl bromide. This yields 2-ethyl-6-methyl cyclohexanone as the product. If alkylation is desired at the other alpha carbon, an unhindered strong base, such as sodium hydride, is used at room temperature. Under these conditions, either alpha carbon may be deprotonated easily. Consequently, the thermodynamically favored enolate forms, and this is the enolate with a more highly substituted carbon-carbon double bond. It results from deprotonation of the more highly substituted alpha position. When the thermodynamic enolate is treated with ethyl bromide, the regioisomeric alpha alkylation product is obtained. Notice that this product has been alkylated on the more hindered alpha carbon. In summary, alkylation at the position alpha to a carbonyl can be achieved through the enolate or the enamine. In either case, the alpha carbon is rendered more nucleophilic so as to facilitate its attack on the electrophilic alkyl halide.
When two unique alpha positions are present, the choice of base and temperature will determine which enolate is formed. Deprotonation with LDA at low temperatures proceeds through a lower energy transition state when it occurs at the less hindered site, resulting in the kinetic enolate. On the other hand, deprotonation with sodium hydride affords the more stable and therefore thermodynamically favored enolate. The preceding was an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.